mine uh, wrote to me on Facebook and he said, Richard, what about um, kicks? You don't really talk that much about kicks in your videos. The reason being is Mantis is about 90% hand techniques. The other 5% would be knees and elbows. And then the last 5% is actually kicking. Kicking is not a huge threat in Mantis. However, we do have several kicks that are used throughout the many forms. But in our forms, you're generally only going to see maybe one or two kicks. Because again, we're emphasizing the other weapons. Because as the old writings say, Fancha was designed for the long path. Whereas Mantis is more of the up close and personal short range attacks, which is what happens with your hands, with your knees, and your elbows. Whereas kicking would be more of a long range distance attack. Okay, the first one I want to talk about is the lifting yin. And the lifting yin, there's nothing fancy to it. It's just the front kick with the toe or the instep into the groin. Almost all mantis kicks are groin or below. Now with the lifting yin, when I do a lifting yin, I do not do the Shaolin type of lift the knee, snap it out, put it down. People see it coming and it's too slow. I do kind of a lift kick and then snap it a little bit at the end. So I'm not going to bring my knee up and snap it. Too slow and lets the person know what you're going to do. So that's the lifting yin kick. Another kick that we use in uh, Mantis is the hatchet kick, and I love this kick. It's a nice short range kick where, again, I'm not lifting, pressing back and down like you see in a lot of arts. It's more of a just a quick scoop, just a quick scoop to the shin. And the whole point of it is scoop to get me close and use my hands. So none of our kicks are going to kill the person. Uh, they're not kicks where uh, we have the idea of a one kick wonder. I'm going to take the guy out with this kick. No. Kick is just a small piece of the mantis puzzle within a technique. So um, I'm going to move in with my hands and at the same time I'm just going to scoop it up from the ground. So there's no knee snappiness here. Just scoop. That's the hatchet kick. And the Mandarin duck kick is simply our version of a roundhouse kick into the crotch. Again, I'm not lifting, popping, coming back and putting down too slow. When I move in, I simply lift it similar to how I did the lifting yin and at the end I'll add a little snap. So my leg comes up, not chambered, I just lift my leg and then at the end give a little tap. It's just a simple lift and tap, lift and tap. So it's not a big production. The faster the kick, the higher probability you're going to get it in. Now, John's in this position, and I find myself in this position. Now we're going to use the reverse point kick. It's kind of the opposite of a roundhouse. I move, boom, and it comes up this way. Now in this one, you do have to chamber a little bit to put it in. But the less you chamber, the better. Because again, it's just a pop and drop 
so that my hands can come in. So if we would be facing this direction, Mandarin duck kick. If we're facing this direction, reverse point kick. And you'll notice when I put my foot down, I'm going to slide it in right behind him so I can use the knee bending as I'm striking him with my hands. Because again, the whole point of this is a bridge to use with your hands. Pop, step back. Take out his guard, and then use whatever I want with my hands. But it's a bridge.